Welcome to the Piston Fanatic. I am your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well, Piston fans, we dropped, lost a tough one tonight, our fifth in a row, to the Golden State Warriors, 120-109. to With five minutes to go, it was 103 to 101. We got outscored um, 17 to 8 in the last five minutes and we took some tough shots and the ball didn't go our way and the ball went in for them but they had an experienced team. We were we were playing in the second half. Monty only played seven players because we were down. We played without seven injured players and they were some good ones. I, I was really excited about this game because um, Golden State is not a good rebounding team. They're one of the worst rebounding teams in the league and we have been some one of the best teams but one of the best rebounders, our best rebounder, Jalen Duran, at the last second was scratched from the lineup with an injury. So Duran did not play. So that really hurt us. I, 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 this was a game that I knew that he was going to dominate. He's been going against some really big, tough guys, and he struggled a little bit. He's let, I think, some of those big, experienced veterans get under his skin a little bit and gotten frustrated. And so I think it's kind of messed with this game a little bit. But, you know, he would have been a huge difference tonight. But still, we're without Bogey, who probably would have been a starter. Ivy, who was one of our best players last year, uh, Monte Morris, who everybody expected to be a really solidifying part of our team this year and a great vet that can shoot the three and run the show. Burks, who has been one of our best players this year, he's been like I think our third leading scorer when things were going good. Now he's missed like four games in a row, or maybe he's missed all five games in a row that we've lost. And Livers, we could use Livers. I mean, we are playing when one of our bigs get hurt, you know, our only real, real, Real rebounders, say that real fast, is is Duran, Stu, and Asar. And so when one of those guys goes down, we really could use livers. And we really don't have that backup for. So he, you know, especially miss him with one of our bigs out. So it's a challenge. You know, you know I, it's just we aren't the best team in the world. We had the worst record in the NBA. And then we lose seven, seven key players. And... And then we still hang in there. We're still two points down to Golden State, you know, with five minutes to go. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Asar, Astar Thompson. That's my new nickname for him, Astar, instead of Asar Thompson. He's He has been just incredible. Talk about that a little bit right now. So he he is number four in points. Well, he, that is going up. He scored... Um, he scored a bunch tonight. He, you know, so he added that his gonna, his average is going to go up a little. But he had 16 tonight again. He said he said 16. I think three games in a row, but he was fourth, number four of all rookies in scoring, number one in offensive rebounds, number one in total rebounds, uh, number two in assists with four assists a game, number two with steals with 1.2, and number three in blocks, probably behind. Uh, Chet and Wimby, so that, that's, those are two big guys, man, but he is getting it done. I mean, I, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit. When he played against um, the Phoenix Suns last night, he had just an incredible game, and he um, he scored, um, let's see, 14 points, and he had, he was two for three on threes, which is huge. He was six for 14, but he had nine rebounds, four assists, Four steals and four blocks. And, you know, like I just shared with you, all the categories. You know, he, there's other people, there's nobody, I think, no rookie that comes close when you add up all of those categories. If you were to rank him and give him points for each category based on where he falls in the ranking and add the total, he would be the, the best rookie. And that is what's made him so special. I was concerned coming into the draft about his shooting because shooting matters. His shooting has gotten better. He was six for ten tonight, uh, you know, and so he, you know, he was terrible two games ago, three games ago, where he, he shot a whole bunch of air balls on threes and stuff. But I, I do believe in his shot, and I, again, I'm excited about him. But he is just such an all-around player. You know, people say somebody's an all-around player, but when you see a guy that get that get that many steals, that many blocks, that many rebounds, and that many assists, and then score. That, that's just an incredible player. He can do that because not only is he a crazy athlete, but he is um, 
smart and he's got great instincts. He understands the game for somebody that's so young and the first time in the NBA. So I, he's a star Thompson. So uh, that's pretty exciting for him. Another thing that's come out of this bad four game, um, five game losing streak is the emergence of Marcus Sasser. He, he was a little bit flat tonight, didn't have his best game, but before tonight he was just out of this world and against, um, Phoenix, he was just on fire. He had tw uh, 22 points, and he was 9 for 16, 4 for 6 on threes. And so he, he just has been, um, you know, exceeded everybody's expectations. I'm sure even Troy Weaver, who drafted him, and I, I thought, oh, what are we doing getting this little guard? You know, he's a little guard, and we had so many guards. I thought, uh, you know, we had, I knew we had Monty Morris, and we had Ivy, and Cade, and Burks and Killian and where in the heck why were we getting another guard and he's little and little guards don't usually make it that great in the NBA but he was a great shooter and he still is a great shooter again he didn't shoot as well tonight but that, that's that been a big thing I mean I it's so frustrating you know we got we, we got all excited we got off to a good start and I I'm, I'm still real confident when we get everybody back we're going to turn it around Monty's in trouble though because he's got too many players he's got all these different guys that are emerging but then everybody comes back there he, he you know I'm, I don't I feel for him because how in the heck you, there's no way possible you can play all those guys so Anyway, I guess it's better than what we had tonight where we were playing only seven guys. We just played our, our five starters, and then we played um, Amude and Bagley a little bit in the second half, but even down the stretch, we didn't play Bagley. So a um, couple things I want to talk about real quick. I, I went down to the game on um, Sunday with... One of my best friends, Doug Reichman, he, I played high school basketball with him. He's the greatest Cal player, player in Cal Casca basketball history. He's like 6'5", and he could shoot the lights out. And he was just, he's a great person, and I had a lot of fun with him. But um, when we go, went down there, it was, you know, fun to watch the game and got to see Kevin Durant score 41 points. But, you know, it's still frustrating to see that you know we were losing and we we didn't we we got out rebounded and it was just weird because um phoenix doesn't have that many big guys but when we were at that game and then we were driving back home and i was listening to 97 won the ticket and, and unfortunately it's the only radio station sports radio station in detroit that i've ever found in the detroit metro area and this guy they're they're ripping on jalen rose and Jalen Rose loves the Pistons. He loves Detroit. And he they're, they're saying, what is he doing, you know, cheering for the Pistons when he's played for like six different NBA teams? Well, I, you know, I called in the station because he has been all about Detroit. It's, you know, when the meet, we're going to complain when ESPN has a guy that hypes the Pistons. He, he unabashedly cheered on the Pistons. I mean, during when he, he had uh, Jalen and Jacoby a show, he, he would, and even when he's on the NBA for ESPN, he, he's not working for him anymore, but he would just talk Detroit basketball, but he loved the Pistons. He grew up watching the bad boys play. That was his team. His, that was his heart. And his dad played for the Pistons with Dave Bing back in the late sixties. And and he's from Detroit. And so, I, I mean, I, I don't know how they're, they said, well, he shouldn't be jumping up and down and cheering the Pistons and put on a show. But I, I think, I thought that it was ridiculous. 97 won the ticket. But, and a lot, a lot of people came on and, and thought the same thing too, that people called in, but they just don't understand. He played at Michigan. He played in Detroit, played on a state championship team, but he was just a big Pist Pistons fan his whole life. So anyway, that's weird. So, um, we're going to talk about the game that was tonight first, I guess, and the, uh, 120 109. Again, it was five losses in a row. And Bagley played 24 minutes. He was four for eight and only two rebounds, 10 points. Uh, Saar had played 37 minutes. He, he, he can go, he can play a lot of minutes. That kid, he want, he loves to play, so he never gets tired. He was six for 10, which I got to believe is by far his best shooting game because he, his, he was shooting 36%, but he's, it's going up and he was shooting 6% on threes. And then he made two for three against the Suns. And then he made one for four tonight. So even one for four raises his percentage. So, um, shouldn't make fun of him because he is, Incredible. Seven rebounds, two assists, 
and four seals and he was everywhere and he was guarding everybody and helping on everybody so he was fun to watch i i really uh love the way Stu battled tonight again he, we were undermanned we don't have he didn't have his tag team partner Jalen Duran down there with him and Duran's a better rebounder Duran's bigger Duran's taller Duran's stronger Duran's well I guess he's not stronger but he he can jump way higher so but anyway Stu was five for nine which is great three for five on threes which is spectacular his percentage is really great unbelievable but the truth is he is passing up shots I mean Katie even yelled at him at one point to shoot the ball he needs to shoot he, he's only shooting right now when he really feels wide open and comfortable and but he needs to take more shots especially when we're shorthanded like this but he had 11 rebounds you know I was disappointed you know we, again we got out rebounded by the Suns he, he only had two rebounds and so that was that really hurt us against that game. But he had 11 rebounds tonight. He got some big offensive rebounds down the stretch, and he was down there just fighting his for everything he had. He had um, seven, four assists, which is really great for as many times as he touched it. He, he scored 17 points. So that was, you know, a great game for him. Cade played 39 minutes and had, was seven for 16, but he he struggled for from three. He was only one for six on threes, and he was 0 for 6, so he's 1 for his last 12, and he was shooting over 40%, and he's just struggling. And then, so I will tell you, I am the biggest Cade Cunningham fan. I love Cade. He is my favorite player, and we need him. We will not be a great team like I think we're going to be unless he's great, and he has not been great lately, and he is he tries to win the game at the end, and he has struggled. So tonight, when the game got close, down the stretch, he missed like four in a row. And so that, you know, that really hurt. He had five turnovers. Again, he sometimes, sometimes he just comes down and he just throws the ball like carelessly. You know, he's got to just get mentally tougher so he doesn't make those, those turnovers. You know, some of them are just unforced, but he, he's still a great player. He's still badly, he still scored 21 points. He had four rebounds and seven assists. So, there's only like five guys in the NBA that have our average of 20 points and six assists or whatever. And he's one of them. And all the other guys are Hall of Famers except for him. And we hope he is someday. But the other guys are almost, I mean, it's like Luca and stuff. And there's just those guys that are all really great players. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what he needs to turn it around. But the, the star of the game tonight, there were two stars, Killian Hayes. And he played 34 minutes. He was eight for 12 and three for four on threes. And, you know, I, you know, I, I guess I, I think I deserve some of the credit because I have been ripping on him because he, for three years, he has shot three years, 37% from the floor and 25% from three point land. And he's been, he shot it his first year, his second year, his third year, his total, they all add up to the same numbers. And he has had three games in a row where he has shot, he was four for eight, four for eight, and then tonight, eight for 12. And the truth is he took, he was better than that. He, at the end of the game, towards the end of the fourth quarter, he took two bad shots and missed them because he would have been eight for 10, you know, if, if he would have took those two tough shots. And he was trying to, he, he, you know, he wasn't being a ball hog. He was, he's forcing up some shots because he wanted to win. And they were just, you know, really highly contested shots. But, um, I felt bad for Weissman. Monty felt bad for Weissman. I know a lot of Piston fans don't feel bad for Weissman, but he played only 11 minutes. He's playing his former team, and he was 0 for 3. He got some shots at the rim, and there were guys there, and nothing can go right for that young man. And he, you know, regardless of what you think, he, he had some moments last year. He was impressive last year. He shot a real high percentage and got a lot of rebounds in like 24 minutes. He was, and then this year he's not got to play in Monty alluded to that, that he, he, you know, he's hardly played. He's played, well, he played 11 minutes tonight and he played six minutes in another game. So he's played 17 minutes the whole year. So, but Stanley and Moody, and he, you know, he came in toward right at the end of the exhibition season, the preseason, he had some games we where he just made, he was on the team, he was practicing with the team and he came in in those games and we were playing 
like Oklahoma City and were down by 20-some, and he comes in, and down the stretch, he made three after three after three. Well, he did it again tonight. You know, he thought, oh, that's one thing to do in a preseason game, but he played only 16 minutes. He was five for eight and four for five on threes, and and he did that in some of those exhibition games. He scored, shot about the same clip, but he scored 15 points in 16 minutes, he made four or five threes, but he made an and one where he, he drove into the lane and made a tough shot. And they called an offensive foul on him at first, but then uh, Monty challenged it and we won the challenge. So he got the and one. So that was pretty cool. Sasser, for the first time all year, struggled. He, you know, shooting wise, he played 33 minutes, way more than he's ever played, but he was five for eight. Um, he was, excuse me, he was three for 10 shooting and he was one for five on threes. And he's been shooting 60% on threes going into tonight. He had three rebounds, four assists and seven points. But again, we were, we were only playing, you know, our only two subs that we played down most of the second half were Amude and Sasser. So that was tough, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Suns game. We So both games, we gave up 120. So we were trying to have this defensive presence, but we've been pretty much since the, you know, first three games, we've been giving up about 120, 120. We gave up 124 um, in one of the games. So we've been giving up uh, a lot of points and, you know, we were, we're trying to do this defensive thing, but it's, it's hard in this league. It's, it's hard to hold teams down. So in the four, four game losing streak before tonight, the starters, which are Duran, Stu, Cade, Killian, and Asar. Those guys, um, their defensive rating, so it's per 100 possessions, how many points a team would score is 118 points, point, 118.6. So that's basically, that's what they would average for a game, but it's not exactly what they would average for a game. It's per 100 possessions to make it better, um, more comparable apples to apples. But our offensive rating is only 101.1. So that means our starters, you know, playing on the average game, they are negative for those four games that we lost before tonight. They are uh, a net sub minus 17 and a half points. So, you know, I, whatever you want to take out of that, but it, our starters have not been good. Of course, you know, one thing about the starters, they're playing against the other team starters, a lot of those minutes. And so the other team starters are, are good. So anyway, um, another thing I wanted to say about uh, tonight's game, Steph had 34 and he was 12 for 26 and seven for 17 on uh, threes, but he, he made his first five out of six and then he missed like nine shots in a row and then he ended up making a bunch more shots. I also didn't, um, this is crazy. Nobody, I, nobody would have convinced me and I'm, I know I'm jumping around a lot, but um, tonight we shot 47% they shot 47 percent we outshot the golden state warriors from the three-point line we shot 43 percent they shot 29 percent on threes they missed a whole lot of threes and so um and we were hot on threes you know especially you know even though Cade was cold on threes but um with stanley he was on fire killing hit good from three and so anyway the other place you know they're they're the shoot team with the best shooters we were 20 for 21 from the free throw line, 95%. And that was a concern of mine going into the year because we shot poorly last year. But the Warriors were only 16 for 21, 76%. The thing that I thought, I was so confident, I thought Duran was playing. I, I, I Until just minutes before the game, I thought he was playing. And they out-rebounded us, not by a lot, but 39 to 44. But rebounding, when we were doing well and winning or having close games, we were out-rebounding our opponents by a lot. So tonight, 14 turnovers <laughs> only, and we, we lose. So that was heartbreaking. And again, uh, you know, you're not making excuses. When you have seven key players injured, you are, you know, your chances, every every team has injuries, but not seven key players like that. So, but if someone were to tell me we would outshoot them from the field, which we barely did, outshoot them by 4% on threes, outshoot them percentage-wise from the free throw line and only turn the ball over 14 times, I would say we're going to win, <laughs> but but we still lost. So that that was tough. We And we lost points in the paint to them by a lot, 50 
uh, 52 to um, 32. They outscored us by 20 points in the paint. And that's the big, uh, big part of that was no drain. They got, you know, and they got a lot, bunch of second chance baskets, a whole bunch of second chance baskets, but a lot of them were just crazy bounces. They shot like an air ball. And it's hard to rebound defensively, they rebound an air ball. But they, anyway, they got a whole lot of second chance points, especially in the first half that really, really made a big difference. But um, anyway, again, like I said, I'm jumping around, but we lost 120 to 106 when I, a game I went to down at the Little Caesars. And Asar, I told you about his game, how fantastic it was. You know, 14 points, four blocks, four steals, four assists, nine rebounds. That, that's just a stat line that you just barely ever see. Even somebody might have four, three or four of those things, but not all of those things. So anyway, he he has um, got the chance to be something really special. So in uh, that game, Stu played 34 minutes. He was only three for six. Again, he's passing up shots. He passed up a lot of shots there, and he was one for two on threes. And he they they're, they're giving him space. So there's not he's not creating spacing exactly because they're not guarding him out there. They, he, but he's not shooting it. But he only had two rebounds, which is hard to figure out how that ever happened. He had eight points, but he had three turnovers, which is when, when Stu has more turnovers than he has rebounds, we're probably in trouble. But uh, Duran, again, he's not been the same. He hurt his foot. He missed a game. And then since he's come back, he has not been the same. Teams are kind of jamming him. He's not getting the lobs like he did. They uh, Teams are defending the lob a lot better, but he... You know, again, he's, I think a lot of these players are kind of taking him out of the game there mentally. You know, he's getting frustrated. He's getting fouled and he's not getting calls. And um, but he he played 31 minutes, 6 for 10, 60%. That's really good. And 11 rebounds, that's really good. And 12 points. But he, he had three assists. That's awesome for a post player. But he had five turnovers. So when you touch the ball only as many times as he does and you have five turnovers, that's killer. So... Cade, 39 minutes. So, again, he's logging lots of minutes. You know, Casey only played him, like, hardly any more than 30 minutes, maybe 32 minutes a night. But he had 39. He, he was 12 for 24, which is not bad, but he was 0 for 6 on 3. So if you took away his three-point shots, he shot really great. But he needs to shoot some threes. And, again, he was shooting at over 40% going into these last two games. But he was 2 for 3 on free throws, 3 rebounds, 6 assists. But he had 6 turnovers. He had 26 points, but six turnovers, and that, that hurts us. He, he he has to be better. Again, some of the passes are careless. We do make turnovers because we have poor spacing, because we have a lot of non-shooters out there. And again, even like Asar, he's been making some. You know, he was two for three, and he was one for four. But they don't guard him. He is so wide open, and they're given, you know, killing lots of space. They're given uh, Stu lots of space. And so, they you know, it, it makes it hard Everybody kind of jams into the paint, and then we try to make those interior passes, and there's not room, and then they get stolen. But Bagley, again, he only 11 minutes, but he was three for five, and five for five on free throws. He always draws fouls, and to to score 11 points in 11 minutes, that is amazing. He only had two rebounds, but again, he only played 11 minutes. But again, that, that, this is a game that Sasser just really lit it up. He played 30 minutes. He had 20 two points, but he was nine for 16, four for six on threes. I already set, gave his stat line, but we shot good for from the field again, 49 to 50. Uh, they shot 50, we shot 49. 35 on threes, they shot 38, which is, you know, isn't bad. Free throw line, we we were pretty good, 12 for six, 14, but we out shot by, they, they outscored us by 14 points from the line, and that's been a problem all year. So, uh, Coach... Monty says that, you know, you can't complain about it. And he said, if I can complain about it, but all that's going to happen is I'm going to get a $50,000 fine. So I'm not going to say anything about it, but we are getting outshot from where we, we got outscored by 43 points before tonight from the free throw line. And teams are taking nine more, over nine more free throws per game than we are. So almost 10 more free throws a game than we are. And I know that, um, you know, that's partway because we make fouls, but it's just partway because we don't get respect because we're a young team. Again, uh, that game, especially the Suns game, K drove in a bunch and got fouled and didn't get fouled. Tonight he made 
the, the shot that brought us back within 101 to 103, he made a tough drive, got hammered, knocked to the ground, no call. But, yeah, it doesn't do any good to complain about it, but it does get frustrating, you know, when you're a fan and and you cheer for your team. Again, I, when you watch a game, you always think that your team gets screwed, but I think that our team did. So, um, so we, where do we go from here? We, we are going to play... Um, we get the day off tomorrow, then we get to go to Milwaukee and play the Bucks. So we're going to be playing in order Durant on um, Sunday, Steph tonight, we get a day off, then we get to play Giannis and Lillard, two Hall of Famers, and then we get a day off, then we get to play Joel Embiid. So there is no rest for our team, and I just hope that we get some players back again. You know, it hurts to have all of them out. But, you know, Killian started to play better. Sasser has really come on. And, and you, know, you know, but if we get, it really hurts us when, if we had Stu out or if we, especially if we have Duran out because he is, he does something that, that, you know, nobody else can. So his rebounding, his strength is setting. He, he hasn't been as good at helping his weak side help on defense. Hasn't been as good. So that, that's been a little bit of frustration that he he needs to be better but he's again he's going to turn 20 here real soon but uh, you know it's not he's he's got to be better but he will get better it's just going to take time it's may not take more than this year or he's going to be inconsistent young players are inconsistent but anyway i forgot to ask but i love we, we had lots of viewers and i'm so excited about how many new viewers we have uh, but it really, I really need your help to subscribe. It really doesn't hurt you. There, there's really nobody that's going to follow you, and you know, there's not. It's not going to hurt you to subscribe. So please, I'm trying to get to be a thou have a thousand subscribers. I don't even know how it all works, but I would really love to get to be, have a thousand subscribers. So if you can just click on it, it's just a click of a button, and so that would really mean a lot to me. But um, be the reason that somebody feels loved and cared for and heard, and go Pistons.